Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim from L'Oreal TV and L'Oreal Radio, uh, here with James Jacob Prash, who is live in England. Jacob, the uh, teachings of the Desert Fathers have made its way into the church through the Emergent Church, as well as prayer walking. Um, are, is the teaching of the Desert Fathers and prayer walk, walking biblical? Let me explain this as follows. I said before that there are three major times when Eastern religion has invaded Western Christendom. But this is not a new phenomenon. Turn with me, first of all, please, to the book of Isaiah, to the book of the Hebrew prophet Isaiah, Ishayahu Hanavi. In Isaiah chapter 2, verse 6, For thou hast abandoned thy people, the house of Jacob, because they are filled with influences from the east. False religion came from the east and emanated from there. That was its source. It was Babylon. False religion always came from the east. It was seducing Israel. At the time Jesus was born, you can see in the writings of Philo, eastern Gnostic influences were trying to infiltrate Judaism. Well, after the time of the apostles, particularly in the post-Nicene era of the early church, in the later patristic era of the later church fathers, something happened. Eastern religion massively infiltrated the church. We'll come back to that in a moment. That was the era when the Desert Fathers sprang into action. The second was during the Crusades. The county prayer on beads and rosaries, that came from Vishnu. The, the Crusades brought that back from India when they went on the spice trade to India through the Middle East. That was the underlying impetus for much of the Crusades was the spice trade, not simply liberation of the Holy Land, quote unquote. They brought back uh, burning incense before statues, things like this, or uh, well, the flagellation rituals found in the Shia Muslim Islamic commemoration of the Battle of Kabbalah with the death of Ali. Well, this was copied by nuns and monks and monasteries of the order of flagellation. This was the second time Eastern religion infiltrated the church. The first was with the post nicene church fathers. The second was the Crusades. This is the third time. We see it with the emergent church. So again, this infiltration happened in Judaism before Christianity. It happened in Roman Catholicism. It happened in Eastern Orthodoxy. Now it's happening in supposedly evangelical churches, or let's say in pseudo-evangelicism. Brian McLaren, he was a high school English teacher. He's no theological training. He wrote books that directly, directly are in front of the word of God like a generous orthodoxy. Him and Rick Warren teamed up to forward Dan Kimball's book, The Emergent Church. Rick Warren has much blood on his hands concerning this issue as he does others. McLaren said, this is what McLaren said, the church should declare a five-year moratorium on debating homosexual marriage and ordination and see if we can come to a consensus in five years, just suspend even talking about it. And if we haven't reached the consensus in five years, have another five-year moratorium on even addressing the issue. Then the church should decide. Now understand what McLaren is saying. By what authority can the church decide something God has already decided? The scripture is not the word of the church, it is the word of God. What McLaren is saying is what liberal higher critics have said. The church wrote the scriptures, therefore the church can rewrite the scriptures, or at least the church wrote the New Testament, therefore the church can rewrite it. This man is a fundamental heretic, and he's the chief guru of the American church. Then he turns around and performs as a clergyman the same-sex marriage for his son and his son's husband. 
This is Brian McLaren. This is where these doctrines are coming from, from things that the Word of God considers to be heretical and perverse. That is McLaren. That's the source of the emergent church. They do not look to the book of Acts or to the scriptures as a model or as a guide to genuine spirituality, scriptural spirituality. They look back to this age of the post-Nicene fathers where mysticism counterfeited biblical spirituality, where they would create an artificial atmosphere with candles and with incense in order to feel something experiential. That's what they're looking to. That is where the labyrinths come from. That is where the prayer walks come from. That is where the Lectio Divina comes from. That was the source of it. And then the Lectio Divina evolved from that tradition. You see people like John Piper doing the Lectio Divina on YouTube with Beth Moore. What would later come from this after the Reformation are the exercises, the Hinduistic visualization of Ignatius Loyola, founder of the Jesuits, who murdered Countless, countless numbers of true believers murdered by the Jesuits to try to stop the spread of the gospel and account the Reformation. But the source of this thinking, this mysticism, this visualization, it always goes back to these desert fathers and to that era in the post nicene church and the late patristic era. Alexandria was a cultural interchange. It was at that time a Greek-speaking city it was prior to the uh, Islamic Arab invasions. It was at that time very much a European type city in Northeast Africa. It is where East met West. Different cities at different times have played that kind of role. Singapore plays that kind of role today to a degree Hong Kong does. Um, other times in history, Istanbul, Constantinople played that role geographically and culturally of East meeting West. Well, at that time, it was Alexandria was where East met West. Buddhist monks and Buddhist nuns came from the Far East as far west as Alexandria. The church had become more and more worldly after Constantine pseudo-Christianized the Roman Empire. The church became more and more worldly. Looking to escape from it, there were people who became hermits. They were going out into the wilderness to live as hermits to escape worldliness, thinking that this was the way to sanctification and of spiritual revelation and communion with God. They went into this idea. Now this again is not what Jesus ever taught. Jesus and the apostles plainly taught, be in the world but not of it. In the world but not of it. We have to be messengers in the world, not escapists going out into the desert somewhere to try to get away from it. There was a sanitized and somewhat better version of this in the Celtic Church. Although the Celtic monks tried to sort of escape from the world by going into islands along the coast of Ireland, or Iona in Scotland and places like this, or Lindisfarne in England, to, to, to be alone and to, to concentrate on God and, and His Word and prayer and things of this nature, they also became preachers. Their monasteries were not cloisters, they were preaching stations. Uh, when the Vikings overran Europe, it was Celtic monks, and they were not monks like the later Benedictines or Dominicans, this is pre-Catholic monks. They were preachers. That was something considerably different in many respects. We're talking about the original monks that came in North Africa. They were influenced by Buddhism, the shaving of the heads. You see the Buddhist monks. Moriel has a mission in Thailand. We had a Buddhist monk who got saved through our ministry in Thailand. The shaving of the heads, or the nuns shaving their heads, and the, 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 the monks and the nuns doing this became tonsorial rites of Roman Catholicism. They began shaving their heads. They went into this cloisterism. This whole thing came from Eastern religion. It was paganistic, pseudo spiritual. It was mysticism, not spirituality. That is the source, the philosophy, underlying the Lectio Divina, underlining contemplative prayer, underlining labyrinths. You've got to use these physical things to try to engineer a spiritual environment. Now, this owes more 
to the Eastern Orthodox tradition, the Roman Catholic tradition, because of icons. In the Eastern Orthodox tradition, they take icons one step further than Roman Catholicism. To them, the icons have a metaphysical property that are windows into the spiritual realm. You pray through the icon. They even take it beyond the so-called sacramentals of Roman Catholicism. The point being, the whole thing is of pagan origin. It is Eastern religion. It is not scriptural Christianity. Just look at McLaren, what he did. He performed the same-sex marriage for his son and his son's husband. Just look at these people. Look at Piper. Just look at that terrible man, what he does. Just look at him. With Beth Moore feeding thousands of people into visualization with Francis Chan. It's absolutely crazy. That is not the biblical idea of meditation. Scripturally, we meditate on his word, not on visualization. When you begin to meditate on visualization or have visualization-based meditation, you're opening yourself to spiritual delusion, to counterfeit visions, to things that are demonic deceptions. We meditate on his word. Then if God gives a vision or a picture, it's from the Lord. It's not based on our trying to imagine something. One of the most dangerous people who was then caught and criminally convicted along with his son, the guy who was a swindler, is Young Yi Chao in Korea. Many people in the West emulated this guy because the church was so big. Not realizing there are far bigger visualization cults in the Far East than his. You can go to uh, Macau, opposite Hong Kong, and you'll see people, Chinese people, who love to gamble for some cultural reason. A lot of Chinese people are predisposed to gambling. They'll have a statue of a Buddha on a street corner on front of a casino. They will pay the monk money. The monk will give them incense, and they'll kneel down and begin visual visualizing themselves winning in the casino bowing down before this Buddha with the sticks of incense. Then they go in and lose anyway. The monk makes money. Well, Young Yi Chao wrote a book in which he said, the subconscious imagination is our spirit. No, our spirit is not our subconscious imagination. That is Eastern religion. That is not biblical Christianity. Our spirit is as distinct from our imagination as our imagination is distinct from our fingers or our legs or our eyelashes. We're three-dimensional, not two-dimensional. Remember, both secular psychology and Eastern religion reduce people to two-dimensional beings. It's simply body and mind. The function of the spirit is, is, is in the mind. That's what's happening today. Young Yi Chao comes along and he says, your subconscious imagination is your spirit. The man is a heretic and a liar. And he says, you picture what you want in your spirit, which is your imagination, and then using the Copeland Hagen word faith formula, you speak it into being by faith. And then he says, he writes in his book, Hindus and Buddhists have known this for centuries. Now Jesus Christ has shown it to him. I have no idea whether or not Young Yi is a Christian, but I know he's a Buddhist. I know he's a Buddhist. Theologically, he's a Buddhist. This is what this man thought before he was arrested and convicted in court as a swindler. That's Yang Chao. It's always gone on. But today, it's come into evangelicism. It's come in with people like Yang Yi Chao. It's come in with people like Brian McLaren and the Emergent Church. But it's always been in Roman Catholicism, and it's certainly been in Eastern Orthodoxy. It was in Israel in the days of Philo, and it was in Israel before that in the days of Isaiah. It is not new. We have to remember there's nothing new under the sun. These things are a con. Now, again, what I said about the two and three dimensional. We are imaginative beings. We have a body, a soul, and a spirit. I've explained this before. The reason we are tripartite, body, soul, and spirit. We have a body because God has a body. Compare that our body for Whenever you see God appearing in human form, even in the Old Testament, it's a Christophany. It's an Old Testament manifestation of Jesus as the Son of God. 
Jesus is God incarnate. We have a spirit because God has a spirit, the Holy Spirit. And we have a soul that has a mind because God has a mind. Who has known the mind of the Father? What Eastern religion does, and what secular psychology does, is take three-dimensional people and make them two-dimensional. Same as Darwinism. And Darwinism was simply apes with better DNA. Carl Jung wrote about the collective unconscious. He made the spiritual dimension of man simply something that is psychological. Well, what you see today in deceptions like Toronto, Canada, the Bibles that we had in places like Toronto, Canada, and Pensacola, Florida, and Lakeland, Florida, and the people like John Arnett and uh, Rodney Howard Brown and other such deceivers in the last 20 years or so, is this. What they think is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the shaking and people falling, that is simply post-hypnotic suggestion combined with demonic deception. Why are these people falling into this hypnotic induction combined with demonic deception? It's a pseudo-spirituality. It's in the mind. It's not in the spirit. The only thing in the spirit is the spiritual deception, the demonic deception on back of these things. It is mysticism. It is not scriptural spirituality because it is not scripturally based. This whole Lectio Divina and these prayer walks and these kinds of things copied from monasticism or Eastern religion, Eastern religious orientation and origin. And again, when you see the fruitcake evangelicals like John Piper accommodating this stuff, I never liked, trusted, or respected John Piper. I never liked him, I never trusted him, and I never respected him. He was replaced with theology. He did not believe in the prophetic purposes of God for Israel and the Jews. He was a Calvinist. Be patient this. As I've often said, being right about Israel does not guarantee somebody is kosher doctrinally. But being wrong about Israel guarantees they are not kosher doctrinally. I have never known any theological author, any preacher, any any expositor who was replaced with theology, who was wrong about Israel, who was a supersessionist like Piper, who was not wrong about something else. I think of John Stott, the false teacher in Great Britain. He was anti-Israel, but then he became annihilationist, began saying we can't tell and save people as hell. He went down the ecumenical road. That was John Stott. Look at John Piper. There's another one. Replaced with theology, he endorses Rick Warren's purpose-driven agenda, promotes Rick Warren in the American Midwest, and then he gets on a platform with a hyper-charismatic from the lunatic fringe, Beth Moore, and is leading people in visualization, in contemplative prayer. This is Eastern religion invading the church. It's what happened with the post nicene church fathers and the desert fathers. It is what happened with the Crusades. It's what happened in the days of Philo. It's what happened in the days of Isaiah. And it's what's happening in these last days. Only now it's not just Roman Catholics or Eastern Orthodox people buying into it. It's people who say they're born again, who say they're evangelical. Watch out for people like Piper and McLaren. Keep away from them. This whole thing is not good. It is not of God. It is not from God. It's an ancient deception that's been repackaged. And Jacob, just to slightly expound on that, I don't find in Scripture that um, what I what I do excuse me what I do find in Scripture is that every time God initiates a supernatural experience like Peter on the roof Peter wasn't yeah. doing something to be put into the trance but yet people these days are seeking this plus this equals a supernatural experience but yet like yet uh, Scripture clearly shows that if there is a supernatural experience God initiates that. You're absolutely correct. That's why I said it was hypnotic induction. They induced it by psychological means. That's why I specifically used the term hypnotic induction. It was psychologically induced. We have an old teaching exposing the 
Toronto deception um, called the Golden Calf, where the people rose up to play and explain the, uh, the Hebrew grammar on back of what they did, how it was all orchestrated and contrived. You can access that on, I think, the Moria website, the Golden Calf, I explained it in considerable depth. You're exactly right. It's induced. It's hypnotic induction. They tried to make it happen by some kind of formulas. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you.